Just a reminder, HTQ's 2016 live stream is powered by Twitch. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Fail Guy. Thanks for the great runs, everyone. Splunky was great. Cheers to everyone there. Save the animals. $20 from Jeremy, I'm not going to pronounce this right, Jeremy Largery. Hey, everyone. Very glad to be donating once again to an amazing cause. You all rock. All my best to those suffering from a terrible disease. Put this towards saving the frames in Super Metroid. $30 uh, from Carnage. Donating because my mom was able to defeat breast cancer, so I thought I should be able to donate to feed it as well. P.S. Save the animals. $15 from Quantum V. Thank you for what you do. Let's beat games and cancer. $10 from Amayarat Akago. Wanted to no-date during the hat and time block, but sadly it wasn't home for that. Nevertheless, you guys still rock. Keep running awesome games, kill cancer, and kill the animals. $10 from Discord Inc. Smokey has been kicking my butt for years, so it'll be a treat to see it destroyed by speedrunners. Donating Super Metroid 2 player 1 controller, because that sounds hilarious. $20 from Eric Bellerich. Thank you from Denmark for donating for a good cause. First time watching, having a lot of fun. My donation is for Runner's Choice. $75 from IFD Delusion. This is my third HDQ. It's amazing what you guys do for an awesome cause. I lost a cousin to cancer, so hopefully, I hope we can finally kick cancer's butt once for all. Kill the animals. $25 from Nestor. This is my fifth marathon I watch and enjoy every second of it. Kill the animals, save the frames. $20 from Griffin M. Get real, got real excited for Splunky's GDQ de debut, possibly to feature an eggplant. Hell run, but on second thought, that would be ridiculous. Congrats on the great run, and here's hoping there's more Splunky to come. $30 from Riftblade, Olmec, worst boss in gaming, only getting, only good getting to hell. Shout out to Lauren, that's 11 N's for making me like this game. If Lauren believes in Bum Commando and Kinney, then I do too. Kick Cancer. $20 from Sobert, greetings from France, good luck on Splunky's run. I haven't managed to finish the game myself. Kill Cancer, the frame, save the animals. $100 from Brendan Bigley. Shoutouts to Kylo Ren. Take a deep breath. Everything's going to be okay, buddy. Squiga donates $250. I really wanted to go to AGDQ this year, but work got in the way. So here's a donation to show my support. This is a worthy cause, and I'm glad to contribute every year. Shoutouts to Booty and his insane skills with Coda in Crypt of the Necrodancer. $25 from DeBomber. Hey team, love it AGDQ. Wish I could watch, but all work and life gets in the way yet again. First time donating. Thanks for everyone who did set up, runs, donated, and watched. Keep up the amazing work. Donation goes to Snowman Ratchet. Rocket Butt OP. $30 from Davey and Atoga. Of course, AGDQ starts just as I finished moving 2,000 miles from home. This is my first week of job hunting. Made a little bit more tolerable with the stream to keep me occupied during my downtime. Great show. I hate, I always hate missing out so much. So I'm glad that I got my destination in time to not miss a thing. Keep up the good work. Reminder, troll the runners, save the animals.
We have $230 from the Skype crew. Hey, Spooty. We're all pulling for you and wishing you the best of luck in this and performing this insane run. You regularly play Coda at a level no one else can claim, and we're sure today won't be any different. Put this donation towards killing the animals in Super Metroid. Fifty-five, $55.55 from the Super J, donating for my first time so far this run, because that's what Bob Ross would have wanted. $25 from Zelnus. I already donated a bunch, but I gotta donate for my boy Spooty. Sub four Coda one day. Donation to Runner's Choice. Also get hyped. It's day three, guys. $25 from Grom Falum. Shoutouts to all the, all the lovely Necrodancer folk and the Condor Racing League, along with Ryan Clark for being an amazing developer. Love you all, and thanks everyone for letting this game get shown. Heart. $50 from Jow Down. Long time watcher, second time donating. Here's $50 to Super Metroid 2, two player, one controller. Bonus game. Let's kill cancer together. $20 from Blind Umpire. Spooty, show them how it's done. Coda style, Condor hype. $500 from Derek Yu. Shout out to Bum Commando. Yep. Shout out to Bum Commando, Kinney, the Splunky community, and HDQ. Thanks for having us on. Love Derek. Kill the animals. One of them is evil. Calibration settings are fine. Hello. Hello. Hi. I guess uh, maybe I should just explain this really quick. This is uh, what this screen means right here. Um, so as it says on the screen, the developers kind of thought this would probably be impossible to clear um, when they made it. Uh, what all this boils down to is I'm only allowed a dagger. I have to move at double tempo. I can't miss any beats. I die in one hit, and I die if I touch gold. So um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen in this run. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and I'm not going to be able to provide much commentary, so on the couch here, I have uh, Mudjo, who is one of the other ten people to have ever beaten this character, and Arachnus, who um, has done a lot of ref work for our racing league. Um, so they'll be trying to fill in on what's going on. Um, with that, I think we're, uh, we're ready to get started then. Yeah, sure. Good luck, Scooty. Good luck. <clears throat> I think to add on to what Scooty just said, uh, the important thing to notice too is you can pick up health and potions in this normally. In this, you can't. And if you touch gold, that potion that normally brings you back to life isn't going to save you. So if he touches that, it's 
game over. Yeah, although the potion will save him from a misbeat, which is pretty good. Because you do have a pretty strong chance to misbeat on this character. Just as one note, when he mentioned before misbeats, what that means is he can't provide any like bad button combo. He can't literally miss any of the buttons on the bottom metronome, and he also can't hit too many times, like if he panics, which is very likely on Coda because there's a lot you have to keep and, track of. And he can't so much as like there's stone walls there, and he only has a base shovel right now. If he was to try to dig those gray walls or the stone walls or these gold walls, it would miss a beat and he would die. Yeah, so this 1-1 one, one kind of rules. He got a potion, which means he'll be able to soak one hit or miss one beat. And he has the ring of phasing, which will let him walk through the walls, which is ideal for this character because it means you have to fight a very minimal amount of enemies. But the big thing he's going to want to find is a torch, because if he doesn't, then phasing is still pretty scary. Yeah. The nice thing about bombs is if he gets himself cornered, uh, especially some of the boss fights that'll be coming up, uh, he can use the bomb to clear the gold. So that's yeah, a so good thing. Yeah, he so really, he, was, he was pretty happy to see that blast sound, but he got rid of it immediately, because the blast sound is actually pretty bad on yeah. phasing. Because it, what it will do is it will immediately detonate a bomb where you're standing, which means the three tiles to your left, to your right, and above and below you will immediately be blown out, which is not what you want. And right there he has a Leprechaun, which he bombed because Leprechauns, when you hit them, they drop gold, and he wanted that Lucky Charm that's at the top of the screen. What that will do is it will bat-proof him, which means, like, bats want to move on every beat, but their movement is random, so it can be pretty hectic to try to avoid them at times, especially mini bosses like Dire Bats. So he got the charm to make them avoid him if they can. And right there, I believe that was a missed beat, and that's where the potion kicked in. And uh, I don't think we mentioned it, but the sunglasses he picked up are plus one damage. Uh, by default, you start with one damage, so right now he's at two damage. And um, like was mentioned at the beginning, it's important to track your damage, because if you were to try to hit when there was nothing to kill, you would either step on gold or it would cause a misbeat. So that was a really nice conga fight. He just did it safe in the intended way, which is killing the conga line and then killing King Conga. So right there, he just waited a little bit, got a read of his immediate surroundings, and then decided to move, which is really wise when you're playing Coda. I also should mention the Glass Torch normally has a downside on other characters, which is that it will immediately spawn like lights and ghasts. But for Coda, Coda starts with the uh, Mazar Charm, which is that blue thing in the top. So he does not have that downside. And also that Minotaur kill he just did was really nice. Basically you could exploit how Minotaurs will try to dash at you even if you're in a wall. So you could just hide in the wall and let them come to you to clear out space safely without trying to get near enemies. And he got the glass armor which will let him soak one hit of damage. Not a beat, but like if an enemy attacks him it will prevent him from dying. And uh, not sure if we mentioned it's this at the beginning, but this is a roguelike, so um, what he's playing through isn't rehearsed or anything, it's just kind of on the fly. Yeah, basically each zone there are certain quirks to the way levels are generated. So like you can see here, the immediate pathways are left and down, so you know from the get-go that the exit is going to be in the top and right because that's just the way zone 2 levels generally generate. And again, he used that nice Minotaur strat to just not have to worry about enemies. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, Death Metal is kind of crazy. Death so. Metal is the fastest song in the game, and I don't have any resources that'll trivialize this fight, so this might be messy. Yeah, normally they look for a uh, pacemaker that lets you just move to any pattern that you want. <laughs> that was a really nice Death Metal. 
Yeah, actually, I'm gonna turn the music up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. And there's one interesting thing there with that menu, actually. You could see that his sound volume was pretty low, and that's because when you do any action with Coda, they're like, Coda will try to make little sounds like grunts when he kills, when she kills things. And it's actually slightly off in the music, and it could really mess with your timing of the song, so he has that pretty low, but still high enough that he could hear it. And that wrist drop is plus two damage. And he has the glass draw, which doubles all the damage on him. So right now he should be doing, I think, like, six. Now the Gi's going to double the damage again. Uh, no, the Gi doubles only the Base weapon. Damage. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little unlucky with that bomb there. The bat's just not yeah. cooperating. Adventure bat. On the bright side, because the lucky charm doesn't have to worry about the back hitting him at least. Collaborating. Oh. Nice. Yay. And now he's just trying to kite everything away from that exit. So yeah, he's trying to lure everything away from the steps. If you can make it to the steps and you're and you get hit while you're on the steps, you're invisible, so you're okay. But it's just getting there is. <laughs> Yeah, and some other characters do have interesting strats with that, where... <sighs> nice. That was messy. Okay, so, okay, so Deep Blues here um, can be really tight, and you can um, have a problem with because every, every piece on the board is going to drop gold, so I have to be very careful about where I kill everything. The frost oh, oh no! I dropped a beat. So that's yeah, that's back to square one. Yeah, one false move and it's over. I would really, I really would have liked to get this first try, but this is I expected it. So you can see he's heading down right. That's one of the quirks of zone one is generally your exit will be somewhere in the bottom right or like bottom left area. Oh. Monkeys. And yeah. Yeah, monkeys, um, normally they don't kill you, but <laughs> since it's Coda, uh, the whole missed beat death thing uh, extends to anything that causes you to lose your multiplier. And getting grabbed by a monkey will cause you to lose multiplier, so monkeys are actually more lethal than other enemies. Uh, unlike other characters where they're less lethal. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why vision is such a huge thing on Coda. Because at least if you have a torch, you can normally like see around the like in that case, like if you had a torch you would be able to see like, oh the skeleton's there waiting to attack me. Yeah, it's very hard when you don't have sight. As much as you open those doors and there's something hiding right behind it. Especially Minotaurs, like they do that. Open the door and you have an enemy right in your face. I got the teleport pound, which is pretty nice. Basically, if he gets hit, it will soak the hit for him and teleport him to the shop on that floor. So right now, it looks like he's probably looking for a shop. 
So we got a better torch there, the infernal torch, which is basically, it's the same vision as the base torch, but as you can see, if you dig any torch on any of the walls, it sends out a flame from your sides that does damage to anything in its path. And it's really useful for like if you want to break open barrels or deal with mini bosses really quickly. That was a really fortunate one with that bat because he, the way the enemies were, the bat was kind of forced to come to him. Which if that wasn't the case, it would be kind of like what happened before in Zone 3 where you got to go chasing the bat. So in that case, you pin the leprechaun against the wall to stop it from dropping any gold on the truck. He has to use two bombs to open those locked shops when he doesn't have phasing, uh, because when you bomb those gold walls, they will drop gold, and that will kill him. Yeah. And he got the transfer just for safety for whenever death metal comes up. I guess I should mention for Coda, you are guaranteed to fight all four of the main bosses on some of the other characters like Cadence, that's not the case, but in this run he will be fighting for Rift, Death Metal, King Kong, and Lucas. scroll because it's pretty awesome but he has to, he knows he has to keep the transplant for death metal. Mm. He leaves the arm behind because he does really need the damage in zone two. There's the teleport crown kicking in. Yeah, he let the moles come to him first because if you just try to run away from them and then they catch up to you as you're trying to dig over to the exit and become kind of a real mess. It's a really nice play. He, he did phasing first and then the map because what would happen otherwise is the shrine of phasing basically reverts your character to their base build. So if he had picked up the map first, then actually... No, I'm pretty sure I'm going to try to take away the map. That's a nice easy, there's a nice quick kill we have coming up. Yeah, so basically with that, Coral Rift's head will always spawn in the middle, so all you have to do is throw, and Coral Rift will always teleport to either the bottom left corner or the right corner, and then from there you can just wiggle like you did, wait for it to come to you, and then bomb. For Coral Rift 3 and 4, it's a little more involved because one bomb won't be able to do it, but there are consistent two bomb strats for that, that actually Spooty made. So the counter here will give him one free item for the first one because Monk is built into his character. I think he has enough, he has more than enough to keep trying a few ones from the items. So we just pick up the blast on like the three bombs and then ditched it because he really likes the monocle for seeing items and seeing secret chops. And that 
fireball scroll will come in super handy if he wants to use, like, like, use it here in zone 4 on a mini bot or a uh, zone boss. Not a chance that he was looking for. He that obviously doesn't want to get him doing a phasing, so we can't take anything in there. Nice. Oh boy. Oh. Death Metal 3 is the hardest version of Death Metal by a pretty far ground. Oh! Um. Oh wait, but I. See, now this is actually a situation where I don't want the glass armor because it would be really. I have a frost charm. It would be really easy to just run up to him and get him to pop it, uh, hit me, which would activate a greater freeze. But glass armor is going to trigger before the frost charm, which would mean I would need to get hit twice. Yeah, which sucks. I think I have a plan involving the fireball scroll, but. Nice. That is not easy to do. <laughs> oh man, that was scary. <laughs> I All almost, right. I almost dr dropped my beat like three times in that fight. That's the hard thing is like you can get the frost charm, you can get the glass armor, and it does protect you um, if you get hit. But it's kind of like a domino effect where once you get hit and you're like off beat, you keep missing beats, and eventually it's just going to kill you. So it. it Kind of has its own risks. So yeah, this whole zone is actually something new since the last time Mega Dancer was at a GPT. So the big thing with Zone 4, he's going to be a little wary of are probably Harpies. Harpies will move a pretty good amount of the map every other beat, which normally for other characters isn't that much of a big deal, but for Kodo and everything is moving at twice, they're going to cover a lot of ground very, very, very fast. I want that fireball spell, but it's gonna the gargoyle next to it's gonna blow up and I'd lose my freeze. <laughs> why he wants to fireball is because you can actually use it inside the wall to attack things, which you might see here, or I would probably save it for 4 3 maybe. Like he's never seen that before. Oh my god. <laughs> so I guess the last thing I should mention is I forgot what the fireball. He actually got it because he knew he had deep blues and with deep blues you could just go to the third row, throw in a fireball, and the fight's done. Uh, what was the final time? How long did it? I'll take it. Yes. That was um, awesome. Yeah, it's sort of like my practice leading up to this was incredibly here and there. Um, I Two days ago I was practicing and I couldn't get out of zone one for like 20 minutes straight. And then that was immediately followed by setting a new world record. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I got a, um, I think it was like a 406. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I'm still a little bit in disbelief that I got that at all, let alone at practice while on AGDQ. Um, so, yeah, like, this is not at all a run that, you know, you would say is marathon safe. And I cannot express in words how happy I am to have pulled it off. Um, uh, if I, uh, if I have 
time, I can show off a couple of quick kills that weren't in the run. Hmm? Okay. All right, that's fine. All right, in that case, um, shout out. I'd just like to give my thanks and shout outs to, um, to Ryan Clark. Um, he's always extremely supportive of the community surrounding this game. He actually uh, helps us, helps fund uh, yeah. monthly racing tournaments that we, uh, it, it's free it's entry and it's cash prizes, it's board. pretty rad. Yeah. Um, honestly, my prize money from winning those <laughs> is part of the reason I was able to make it out here at all. So I really have to give all my love to him. And also, on, on a note to everyone involved in the, uh, the Racing League, Condor, Trip from Necromancer Online Racing League, um, for all the work they put on that. Um, also would like to give my shout outs to, uh, to the in the group community. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I, there, weren't any, there wasn't any dishwashing going on in this run, but uh, I'm sure you guys will be fine. Um, also to my family and to my lovely and wonderfully supportive girlfriend, Katie, back home. Um, I, <coughs> I think that's all I have to say. And, um, yeah, of course, also to my couch here, uh, <laughs> if you like Necker Dancer and hot spicy memes, uh, definitely give Mojo here a follow. <laughs> and we're coming up on the end of the credits right here. Astounding! You have attained Necro Mastery! I didn't know that was even a thing. <laughs> I, I played it without the credits on. I didn't even know. Well, I think they had their suspicions because they went through the files and they, there was one file that we've never like seen. And I've that never seen that it. before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there we go. Final in game time, eight thirty-seven sixteen. Um, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you all around. Well, that was an astounding performance of Crypt of the Anchor Dancer. Uh, up next, we will have Laura Croft and the Guardian of Light, also known as L. Siegel. But before that happens, we're going to have a quick ad from the Yeti. So coming up shortly, oh, that's probably some donations. We have $35 from Wuzzy. Best of luck to the person who said they're in the middle of their job search. I myself have an interview later and both get some pleat and sweet employment. $50 for a Super Metroid play by two players on one controller needs to be witnessed by all. Support to Oats and Goats and Sweet Num. Hooray for AGQ and Cancer Prevention. $20 from Darkwater. Necrodancer hype. Everyone better get used to those clicking noises from the keyboard because you'll be hearing them nonstop throughout the run. $50 from Kill Theme. Shout out to all the players and sponsors of the event. First time donating to the awesome cause, and this donation goes to Runner's Choice. $25 from Anonymous. Love the Necrodancer at GDQ. Always a great watch. Shout out to the fantastic community. Now, if you excuse me, I'll have to go lie on the floor and act like garbage. $20 from Valkerfield. This seems way too easy, Spooty. Another $20 for no phasing. $77 from SH170. $77. I like what you're doing. Best of luck to all the runners and kill the animals. Papa, Smur Papa Snarf, $100. Kill the butcher to save the animals. 
Fifty dollars from Kristen Lund. First time watching any GTQ event live and loving it. So many good runners, and of course, awesome games. Good luck to the rest of the runners. Warm greetings from Norway. So as previously mentioned, up next is Laura Croft and the Guardian of Light co-op by Random Pink Bunny and Dr. Dreadgasm, I mean Dr. T-Chaps. Good luck, guys. So it looks like the costume choice has been donated as legend. So that's that's the, the number one. The HTQ live stream 2016 is powered by Twitter.